Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this in-depth painting tutorial. It's for Astra Militarum. Uh, so many requests have come through for this. How do you paint the Astra Militarum tanks? And uh, so James has very kindly lent me one of his vehicles. He's constructed it, constructed it, magnetized it, ready to go. Uh, and so in this uh, tutorial here, I'm going to take you through from start to finish how to reach the standard that you see here for your Astra Militarum tank. So that camouflage pattern that you see, we'll cover that here in this video all the weathering techniques, rusty effects that you can do, chipping, all of that's covered, and even things like the face, the gems, and the searchlight here as well, we'll cover that in this video also. So this is the finished vehicle, uh, it's this model that we're going to be painting here in this video. I'm going to zoom in so you can take a, a closer look at the end result. So there's the model, gives you an idea of the, the details here, so this pattern, we'll cover that. The chipping and rust, you can see the grimier effect around the tracks where we'll be running through the mud and puddles and so on. Then uh, details around the back here as well. We'll cover all of that. And then things like the vision slits here in the neon green there, the visor the face. You can see the detail there on the searchlight, nice feature to have as well. We'll cover all of that here in this video also. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll take a look now at the materials that you'll need uh, for this project. All right, so we'll go through the model in just a moment, uh, but I'll run through materials that you'll need in this project first of all. Uh, so the key to this ad uh, is the spray. It's really going to help you out here. Uh, so it is Army Painter Uniform Grey. It's a brilliant shade. It's just a, a medium grey. It's not too light, not too dark. It's perfect for putting uh, your paints onto all the different paints we're going to use. We'll go straight onto this. Uh, perfect for the washes uh, and then uh, great for picking out the highlights later on. So I uh, highly recommend this stuff. You can spray it on. You don't need to varnish over the top of it. The paints and washes will go straight over the top. Uh, no problem at all. So that's that spray, but uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, and then to finish the vehicle off, Munitor and Varnish. If you are a little bit worried about the washes uh, not spreading across the vehicle consistently, then after you've sprayed the uniform grey, then give it a coat of the Munitor and Varnish. Varnish helps uh, the washes to go on, no problem. It shouldn't be a problem. But if you do encounter any issues, then uh, give it a coat of varnish uh, before you put any paints and washes onto the bottle. So then for paints, then quite a limited palette here, uh, so not too many paints required for such a large project. Uh, a bad and black, one of the key colours you're going to be using. Ironbreaker, a lot of metal work to do. Uh, Administratum Grey, that's sort of one shade lighter than Dawnstone. Dawnstone for any repairs and so on. You see that matches up uh, with your uniform grey quite well. Good enough. And you can adjust it slightly with a little bit of white, a little bit of black if you need to match it in. Administratum Grey. Uh, then Ceramite White. I've got the old Scorpion Green here, it's now called Moot Green. Uh, you'll also need your Warpstone Glow. Add a shabti bone. This is for painting the flesh. Here we've got a commander in the turret here, or one of the crewmen. So I'll show you how to paint the face and hands and so on. Add, and then uh, door flesh for the skin. Uh, and then washes. Uh, seraphim sepia, agrax earth shade. And also you'll need some gnome oil as well uh, for your shades. So then uh, other materials that you'll need then. Just your palette and tissue, water, uh, modelling knife with a bit of battle damage in a moment, uh, a drill, 
hand drill. There, and then a selection, a broad selection of brushes here also. So, I'm going to show you the vehicle here. The bits are all falling off because this is James's tank that he's kindly lent me. Uh, the story behind Ashton Red of Time, I started collecting them first, I believe, and then put this colour scheme together. And then as I went into other factions, I started to diversify, especially with Xenos. Uh, James then took over the Ashton Red of Time and it tripled the size of the collection. So really, he runs it now. Some of the tanks uh, are my colour scheme, some of the Chimeras, some of the Lean Rushes, uh, but most of the vehicles now, James has sort of taken over. Uh, control of that. So this is his vehicle, he's kind of lent it to me here just so we can get this paint and tutorial put together for you. So he's, this is his ingenious magnetising going on here. So you've got the sponsor and weapons just slot in and then the turret, the rest of the vehicle is constructed solid here uh, and then the turret he has magnetised this front plate with a couple of magnets. I'll maybe zoom in here so you can see so it's a plate like this, it just goes over the top and then you can check out his channel for more details on this but uh, he's put a couple of magnets nice and plush, he's drilled them and stuck them in there and again a couple of magnets just tucked in there to hand it to him it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty good what he's done uh, and then the turret itself breaks open and he's sunk some magnets in here just so that the whole thing tacks in like so and that means that the turret or the, the main gun just sits loose as it comes, just rests on top of that and tucks in. The purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to paint one option. So it's going to be the, the vanquisher here with the extra long gun. And I'll paint the heavy bolters, pretty standard loadout, and a les can for the central sponsor as well. Uh, but that's the other accessories that he has, so he's able to do all the different options. But that's all of those. But he's done just that. So just to streamline this video, let him paint those up if he wants to, and then we'll go with uh, this configuration here uh, for this tutorial. So uh, I haven't even asked James, uh, but I'm going to put a bit of battle damage <laughs> on his tank here. <laughs> so I'm going to take the knife to it. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> so we'll do a bit of damage. So the key is not to do too much. Uh, so one great thing you can do is, uh, is machine gun hits and as people advised mate don't do a Hollywood style straight line do a random patchwork you know, bullets would hit randomly so say it's been shot in the side here so we're going to drill one hole there and then we'll go do one here and we'll do one here we'll do a general pattern of them well, General Patton was a famous commander. <laughs> but there we go, like that. And then I put another one quite close. I'll put one in there. Keep it nice and random. Just blowing away the excess. Cool. There's some bullet hits at the back there. I reckon there'd be a few at the front. So this front plate can take a hit down here. Put one here. And one. I'll do one there. That looks okay. A couple of hits there. I'll maybe try and get one on this angled armor. It's quite difficult. You'll watch slipping. Maybe start an angle and then angle it down like that. That looks okay, that's fine. So uh, there's that option to do. Again, don't do too much, I think that'll do. A couple here and there, cluster there and a cluster at the front, that'll do. Uh, and then, uh, battle damage. So uh, one type of damage you can do is just to nick off corners and angles. So I just take the blade like that and put cuts in. Just where it's bashed and scraped, maybe driven through a wall or through another burnt out vehicle and it's just scraped it. So I zoom in here and let you see. It's that kind of damage. Easy to do, 
it just takes that factory fresh look away. You can do little shallow little nicks in it, like that. That's fine, and then just, you could spend forever doing it, so I'm just gonna do a, a few. Another one, another one looks quite good, is like a stab. Where you take, and you be careful where you put your hands, keep them out of the way. And you take the blade and actually push it along, away from you. And sort of stab it into the plastic. Like that, and you get that kind of effect. You can see it there. That looks pretty cool. Like um, shrapnel's blown out in that direction. It's gouged into the metalwork. It looks pretty cool. So a little bit of that as well. But you're trying to do marks where it looks like you haven't just scraped it with a knife. You just do cuts with a knife. It, it looks that way. And so you're trying to do clever ideas where it doesn't look like you've you just chiseled it with a knife. That looks quite realistic. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and then just nicking corners and chips and so on on there. And not too much, that's enough around the front, really. I just want to do a few little bits extra here and there. A little bit out of that bit. A few little scrapes along the bodywork. And that looks fine. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on doing a bit more battle damage. Alright, so that battle damage is complete. Again, don't want to go too over the top here, but it's just around the model. I've, I've put a fair bit around the, the base here. This is where it's going to be bashing and scraping along, driving through rubble and so on. So there's a fair, fair few nicks and, and dashes, gashes and so on in the, the bottom here. Around on the other side. And a few little random bits, just to break up the, the smoothness and cleanness of these panels here. And a little bit on the turret. Just be aware though, be careful, you don't do too much around areas where you think you're going to be putting markings and transfers and so on. Because it might disrupt putting those on later on. So you can avoid those kind of areas. No James likes to put markings on the side of the turret here, so I've avoided. Uh, those kind of areas. That's the markings done. Uh, so I'm going to break this model up now into its bits and uh, then uh, we will give it a spray. So uh, I'll just be putting the vehicle upside down, spraying all four sides and when it's dry flipping it over and spraying the other side it'll give you a brilliant coverage then. Same with this, I'll spray underneath uh, and then spray both all four sides, flip it back over, spray all four sides, same with all of these accessories here. So it's a, a one single even decent coat of the Army Painter uh, uniform grey. Alright, so your first stage, and this is dried here, that beautiful, it's a lovely colour, it really is a nice grey, brilliant starting point painting. Uh, so we're going to go for the Iron Breaker here, first of all. Going to take a larger brush, I'm even tempted to go for the shade brush here. So not for all of the silver, we're gonna do this iron breaker. You can use it on these tracks. There's no need to spend ages here. Nice larger brush. Uh, but any areas where it's gonna be silver, you can paint that on. And you'll see that goes straight onto that grate, one coat and on. And you know, so this technique is too quick, but it, this is Astro the time. You know, you may have 10 tanks to paint up, and so you want a technique where you're gonna get your results pretty quick. And that's what the idea is behind these painted tutorials is to give you a good technique, nice results, you can stand back and be proud of your army but you've got the results pretty effectively. So I'm just taking it around the edge of the tracks here. It doesn't really matter if I flick it onto the grey but I'd rather not so I'm just being generally tidy. And that's kind of nice, so that's nice and quick. Then I'm just going to round the edge here and up to the track guards. Like so. So you just turn the grey in just into a metallic really. So just tuck around the inside of the tracks. And any other areas where it's a larger bit of metal work, really it's just going to be the tracks. I'll switch down to a smaller brush. Yep, yeah, let's go on nice and quickly. And just stab that into there. Like so. So that's that one track done virtually all the way around. I'll do the other track and I'll, I'll show you another area of, of silver. So another area of silver that you can do is like the Laz Cannon here. Uh, so be just filling that in with silver. And again, it just goes onto that grate brilliantly. So look something like that. One coat will do because you're going to put washes over the top and re-highlight it later on. So one good coat. 
goes on just great. It's working way around. It's actually this bit here as well. And I'm actually gonna get the brush and tuck it into these slits just here and the end nozzle as well, which James has drilled out by the looks of it. Like so. And Yeah, I reckon we'll do this bit here in the silver as well. It's your choice, you know, you can leave that grey, you can do it black, there's plenty of artistic license here, but I think we'll go for the silver, because it's all linked together together here. Yeah. So we'll do that in the silver. Something like that, and then you can do, this bit here is going to tuck and disappear inside uh, the uh, sponge and here at the front. I'll just shade it with the silver. So it looks tidy, like that, okay. So that's that bit done. We're gonna go around the rest of the vehicle. I'll go around with the silver and then I'll show you where I've been. All right, so uh, silver's complete. I'll just point out to you where I've been uh, here with this. So uh, you've got the any crests and eagles here on the front of the helmet, for example, on this uh, tank commander here. Any of the electrical sort of head pieces and chin strap, and that's all done with that. There's an eagle there on his tunic also. Uh, these on the smoke launchers, uh, trimmed around with the silver. This uh, mechanism for opening the hatch as well. Just common sense, really. The main body work, going to leave all that. That's going to be the painted grey and black pattern. Another eagle on the back there is just painted there in the silver. Uh, ready to go. Uh, the tip of the tank barrel, or the tip of the gun barrel, just here. Uh, the main length of it there. Put that back in. And then uh, this bit here, which is going to be partially covered up when it's put inside uh, the main part of the turret. There's nothing on that piece, nothing on the front piece. Uh, the Sponson heavy bolters, just the main gun barrel. Uh, and other bits on top. We'll zoom in on those later and show you exactly where to paint, but mostly silver. Uh, just like a standard bolt, you have the main uh, mechanics of the weapon in the silver, and then there's a panel on both sides, usually in black. So it's going to be the same for these. Last cannon, the main bodywork, all is silver, and this uh, casing around the end now, that will be black later on. Uh, and then the main bodywork of the tank. It's really, you've got a bit of license to paint wherever you want. Uh, this little bit here I've done in silver and this vent here, this grill here as well, repeated that on the other side. Uh, obviously the tracks running around with silver just there, nice and quick with a larger brush. Uh, these attachments here for cables uh, done in silver. And then around the back there's a fair bit of the tow bar here at the back. Uh, these exhausts, this crest, the main barrel. This vent here I've done as well, and then the grill here, and eagle at the top on uh, that panel there also. Not too bad, doesn't take too long. So that's your first stage, really. The, the work's going to be done by your washes. And the colour scheme is quite plain, you know, grey and black. Uh, but then any other little colours that you add in will really stand out, because the rest of the colour scheme is so plain. Uh, and you'll be able to achieve some great effects. So, we've made a start here, still quite a way to go. Uh, but we'll maybe pick out a few of the minor colours here, just to get those done next. So next we're going to paint a little bit of flesh. Obviously this may not be an option if you don't have any tank crew uh, out here but this one does have a crewman out so just going to fill in here where his face is. No hands on this guy but if there's hands to do as well then you can paint them in the flesh as well. I'm just going to tuck that in. It's going to be quite tidy like so. So easy enough. Next I have the Shabti Bone, and I'm going to fill in the searchlight here with this colour. So I'm just going to run that round. And the way you can paint this up, James puts a bit of effort into these, but uh, it's a real nice focal point on the vehicle. But our foundation colour is going to be this uh, Shabti Bone just to start us off. So I'm just going to run the brush around and fill that in. Move it all off. And 
There's a little bit of um, stuff in there. There's a duck. Go and just pick that out. Get that filled in. I'm gonna let that dry, and I reckon I'm gonna give that a second coat. I want that nice and solid. Whilst that's drying, I'm gonna take the ceramite white here. And I'm just gonna patch in on top, or on the inside of this hatch. So you know, originally I first started painting these tanks, I thought, oh, white's a, a funny color to use. You know, why would you use it? But if you look on historical vehicles, they usually have a very bright color the inside of the tank because it's so dark they need the brightest colour possible to reflect the light around inside the cabin so I think it'd be the same for the instrument of time so just white here and we'll tone that down and weather it and so on just so it doesn't stand out too much but white technically or even the shabti bone if you want to but it needs to be a light colour is what they would use for the inside armour or the inside of the hull of the vehicle so I'm just going to fill that in the edge and I don't want it too stark so I'm just going to do one coat of that it's not a perfect coverage I don't want it to be perfect coverage because I want any way possible just to tone that down a little bit so that's fine this is now dry so I'll do a second coat on this a shabty bone I want this nice and clean cut and crisp so I'll do a second coat on that make sure I fill in the gaps here Run the brush around, like so, yeah, that's better. So, you know, this great grey spray is saving you tons of time. There's not too much else to do here. We're going to do the black, that's going to be one of the main uh, colours to fill in. So there is these uh, vision aperture things just here. There's the visor uh, on his head, but I've got a lot of black to paint, and the colour scheme and the pattern may run across this and may disrupt the green. So I'll touch the green in neater at the end. So we'll leave the green for now, this warp stone glow will be the last colour we do. We're going to focus on the black. Next, there's a fair bit to do. There's areas to pick out, like panels and so on in black. And there's also this uh, pattern as well, this camouflage, urban camouflage pattern to paint also. So I'm going to stick with my size one brush here. It's decent enough kind of size, uh, but uh, neat enough, I want it to be neat enough with this. I don't, want, I don't want to make bad mistakes with this black onto the grey. And if you do, you want to just wet the brush or wet your finger and rub them off as quickly as you can. But there's the endy bits here on the smoke launchers. And again, you've got license. I'm just going to paint out all the panels first of all. Or all of the uh, bits that need to be painted black. We'll do the pattern after that. But you do have a license here to, to pick out whichever bits you want. Really, what you're trying to do is offset this grey, but too much grey and it, it looks too plain looks like you haven't put the effort in, so what you're trying to do now is to uh, get this balanced out a bit more by using this black now this whole I'm going to paint this whole fixing here in the black so the whole unit smoke launcher unit here and I'll go nice and tidy so that you've got the silver bit in the middle and then the black either side. So that's going on fine. There's some bolts bits sticking out here and then there's other bits that we can chip those up later on uh, with the silver. That's it. See, it just gives something else to look at. It takes away from you've got the main grey panels and so on. Now you've got an area that's been painted up. And it's not too bad, guys. It'll take you a while to work around the model. The last thing you want is, is too much grey. And then the model just looks miles too plain. So. That's that bit. That's it. Something like that. 
Then I'm just going to put a bit of water on this brush. I want the paint to flow nicely. So then uh, you've got to be careful with the black because if you touch it whilst it's wet, it will come off. And even when it's dry, if you uh, rub it and hold it too much, uh, the paint will start coming off as well. So you've got to watch the black. It will it will stay on a lot better once this washes over the top, but it is quite vulnerable at this point. So for the guardsman inside, uh, the helmet, I'm being neat now. I've splashed a bit of silver on the helmet, but now I want to be nice and tidy with the black. So there's the helmet to pick out. And I'm not going to second coat this. One coat here, again, seems to be putting, going about 80-90% coverage. So technically you could go for a second coat, but I don't think I'm going to need to here on these minor details. I may well do on some of the larger panels. Just to make them a bit more solid, but this will be more than enough. I've got a nice tip on the brush, even though it's a larger size. Let's run that under there. And then... Following the model around. Like so. Uh, then, shoulder pad. And again, it's black goes perfectly onto this grate. Brilliant stuff. So a lot of the colour schemes that I do, a lot of the painting techniques I show you, the key is that the preparation and getting that correct shade to start you off and it just saves you a ton of time. So just working way along. Like so it's starting to look the part. Any tunics and material uh, just left in grey and that could be shaded and then once it's shaded there's no further work to do on it again saving you tons of time but still looks pretty good there you go there's the two shoulder pads looking all right uh, so I'll press on here I'd, I've gone silver on this might well I'm going to change my mind I reckon I'm going to go for black on on this searchlight I think it just looks a bit more serious and professional so uh, but there'll still be some silver and I want to chip it up later on uh, but I'm going to go around the tank here I think what I'll do is I'll go around the tank and show you all the areas painted in black and then we'll come back and do the pattern after that. Right, so black's done. We'll do the pattern next, but I've painted uh, around the searchlight now, uh, the smoke launchers, uh, the commander here of the tank as well. Then onto the gun barrel for the main gun, uh, the vanquisher cannon. I've painted a fair bit of the trim here because the pattern's not going to go onto the gun barrel. You can if you want to, but I don't usually run the pattern out, out onto the gun barrel. Uh, so don't want it too grey along here, I want this to be a, a focal point. Black seems to draw the eye in and define things a bit better, so I've, I've trimmed and run the black around here, leaving some grey on there. That should shade up quite nice once the wash is gone. Nothing on this base plate, nothing on that bit. Uh, and then uh, the bolters then, so you can see the side panel here. This bit here I've painted in the black now as well, just to make it nice and neat. Around the other side and then remembering to tuck in there and along the top also and underneath just nice and tidy like that try not to touch them too much because that paint does rub off from there and then again just going to repeat put the black on here and then just around the end there for the las can not too slow actually pretty quick uh, so the sponsons then remembering to rotate these and paint inside Rotate all the way around and paint the other side as well. Just to make sure you cover all of that. Again, just going to pull that slowly across. Don't want to rub the paint off. Then a, a bit of work around the back here. This whole back panel I've done. The straps for the barrel going all the way around. And then the bits holding on the exhaust as well. I've done that in black also. Just to break it up again, just to break up the black. Do you know what I think I might do actually? And again, you're free to change my I've just changed my mind here. Um, I'm going to take the black, this whole box, you see I've just done the door, just blobbed a bit of paint there, you see I've just done the door here, I'm going to do this whole box in black, that just looks a bit better, I just paint the door, I think just paint the whole unit, so, I'm just going to run around this, yeah, a lot of artistic license, I think it looks better with that whole box done, so I'll do that, I'll leave the hinges and so I'll chip those up. Uh, with the silver, so leave them in grey, but this whole box we'll do it in the black. 
any other ammunition crates and boxes and so on I imagine will be in black as well and now I'm just going to run along the top just tuck in inside here again the black just goes on nice onto this grey base colour goes on really well but so I'll finish that off and then we'll come back and start on the pattern so with the pattern it's, it's really it's the trademark of this colour scheme as and you'd be surprised how quite straightforward it is uh, it's like a camouflage pattern just two shades the original grey that's underneath here and black and it's to create that urban kind of look and really looking for uh, a zigzag pattern but I tend to follow a general direction with it so I'm going to angle it like sort of this way across the side of the vehicle so it's not entirely random and again you've got complete license to paint this however you wish uh, but really it's just a case of zigzag lines and I'm trying to create that kind of angle and that'll wrap round and we'll follow that angle round and across the turret and so on so you know a little bit tricky to start off and then you'll get the hang of it and you sort of develop your own style you don't have to copy exactly the way I'm doing it here uh, but so uh, you'll start, start to develop your own style and your speed will actually pick up so the way to work this one is uh, I've got a neat enough brush here and it's not to, to overemphasize neatness at this stage you want to paint your, your general outline and then you'll sharpen up the pattern uh, later on with the administratum grey so let's do uh, a panel here so here we go <laughs> so I'm going to run a straight line down here and sort of ignoring all the bumps and so on, you're trying to keep that straight line running and I'm going to stop it just there then I'm going to run out a bit to here and just ignore all the panels, this pattern must cross across everything here and then I'm going to tuck back in like this and then I'm going to go almost straight down and end it just there and at the moment I'm thinking keeping this middle bit grey this bit black maybe the pattern might tuck in a little bit at the end so I'm going to bring in in a bit and then out again like so so this whole area here is going to be in black then I've got some grey now we're going to work around the sponsor a little bit trickier so I reckon we'd start don't want to copy the same angle, so I'm going to go a bit steeper, straight up. Then I'll come to the sponsor, and I'm going to go back. Remember, I said that you don't want to deliberately come up to any edges, so I'm going to stop there and actually head off now in this direction. And I'm going to let that run down. Then I'm going to go straight down, down, see the pattern's starting to form, I'm just going to keep that running, and underneath, and on a bit more, like so. And then a short bit coming in, and then away again. It's nice and random here. Yeah. And you see the way it just crosses over all of the uh, bumps and panels and so on without interruption. That's what you want, that's that proper camouflage look. You're not looking to paint up to any edges because the, the eye will pick that up and it won't look right. So you are looking to, to transcend or to go across any of these boundaries here, just ignoring it almost, just working your way along it, forming up your pattern like so. So then uh, I'm going to go quite steep in here with this one, stop, tuck right out again, it's just something a bit different, and then actually go down and end it just there, and that finishes that off. So this area here is actually going to be in black. You could put an angle in here just to break this up, yeah maybe. So I'm going to go across there, and go like that. Not too
too much. This pattern uh, is straightforward because there's not too many panels here. I don't want to go too camouflage but again, you can if you wish. But the more of these that you do, the more work that you have. As long as the larger panels, uh, the more effective. So pretty much uh, done that side. That's pretty good. And remember, yeah, I'm going to continue the pattern. So the pattern is going to continue up across here and then across the top of the vehicle. So you've got to continue on this pattern running around from these points on, which your pattern's going to roll off in this direction. So if I spin it round, I'll maybe go with this one here. I'm going to run it out. And then I'm going to tuck in, down, upside to here say so just traversing all of the the angles and I'm not incredibly neat because we'll sharpen and, and put that in really tidy later on then I'm gonna go out again you won't get to see this pattern around here because of the turret being on top but we'll run it that way so I'm, I'm looking at just trying to work out my angles here. So I'm traveling in this direction. I'll put the brush there to show you the angle. So I'm wanting to head out in this direction now with this. So I could run this all the way along here. Is okay. Then I may even come out. Straight down. Halfway across the top of this. It looks so much better when you can just cut straight across panels and bumps and so on. Don't work around them, just be fearless and cut straight through them. That looks good, I'm getting my angle back now. And then I'm gonna go across here, down. I'm liking the look of that, it looks okay. And then I'm gonna tuck back in again, like that. Now I've almost reached the other side. I'm going to go up the inside of the track area, tip it off at the tracks, and really looking to continue on the other side. So now I'm working this way and around. All right, so now you've got a choice. You can, and again, it's entirely up to you. I know it's going to be hardly a difference, but I'm coming across at this angle uh, here. Like so, I've just put a blob there, but. It, that's a black panel anyway, so that'll be fine. So I'm coming at this angle here, this way. You can either continue to hit at that angle, in which case your angle is going to carry on like this, in the opposite direction on the other side. So it's sweeping back on this side, and then when you come to the other side, it's actually going to be uh, coming across this way, so going forwards. So you're going to have a different angle. Uh, or you can switch your angle and zigzag it back around to face that direction. Either way, I don't think it really matters. Uh, I'm just going to follow the same angle across the model here. So, for example, if you follow me along here, I'm going to run this pattern along the top. Going to zigzag out a little bit shallower. I don't want to copy the pattern here. I want a general direction, but I want to keep it a separate, separate angles. So just tuck her in like so. Now I'm going to run across, reaching the turret, change my angle again, and it's quite long, They're quite long brush strokes here. Again, you can go short if you wish, you, have a, you can develop your own pattern. What I would say is you want to keep the same pattern, whatever you decide to go for throughout your, your arm, you don't want different camouflage patterns, different tanks. You know, it looks like you've gradually changed your mind as you go along. It doesn't, wouldn't look too good. So you want to sort of settle what pattern you're going to go for. So I'm just working through the gaps here, up onto the track guards. Then I'm going to cut away. See the pattern running through. And then... I'm going to go quite shallow down the side. Quite shallow again. And then it's a steeper runoff. Now 
And because you're not going to hypernate, you can get this done quite quick. If you've got a batch of vehicles, you could put these patterns on. You really all get pretty good at doing them. Uh, so the track continues here. So this lines up nice. If our pattern comes through here, and then I'm going to bring it in to there, and then we'll say it comes out the other side just here, an angle, and disappears off. Like so it just disappears, just that. So there we go. So I've shown you how to do most of this here. I'm going to run this pattern to there. Then I'm going to tuck it in. Nice and random is key. Unpredictable. Best camouflage patterns I've seen are random and they just random but controlled. You know, you're controlling your, your angles here, but uh, just cutting across any type of features. Looks great. So I'm going straight across that vision slit and down. Then we'll zigzag out a little bit and then I'm going to cut and steep across, across, down. The underside of the vehicle depends how much effort you want to put in. You can continue the patterns underneath. I think I'll just run this one off just to, to nothing and end it there. We'll fill that all in with dirt and grime, not worry about pattern underneath. Uh, so we've, we've done about half of the vehicle here. So then what you do for the turret is uh, not worry about the gun barrel, don't need that. We all need this front panel though. You assemble the turret when you're finished with the bodywork. I'll just show you here. Put the turret on. Spin the turret around so it's forward facing. And that is where you continue pattern on across uh, the turret. So I'm just going to wash the brush out here. So just make sure this is on properly. Okay, so I can now see the point here where this pattern finishes, which is just in there. So that's my starting point. And I'm going to come out. And I reckon I could take the turret off and get to that underneath later on, but I reckon I'm going to come out here with this. And again, keep my angle, so I'm going to cut in. Like so. And then now I want to go across. I want to watch that cut across this way. Nice long pattern across there. See the way it's continuing on. I'm looking to that, for that link up point, which is, I'll make sure this is right, it's just in here. So I'll bring that up. There it is, it's just there. So now I reckon I'm gonna go out this direction, continue on. and then bring this one along a bit more and then now I'm going to put my angle and join the two together so I'm going to go from there straight across partly clipping the eagle and then linking up just there joined okay so now your pattern's gone it goes all the way across here all the way across and traverses straight across the turret incorporating that in as well there's another one to do it starts here pull it out to there this is my starting point um, my destination I'm trying to reach in here, so I'm going to try and trying to get across in this direction. So I reckon I'll come, I'll go back on myself a little bit actually. So I'm going to come up in this direction, just to keep it nice and random. Then I'm going to go across, and I want to cover part of this hatch, so I've got to go across a bit more, and then I'm going to come straight across here and across all of this. Spin the vehicle around. That bit's come off, it doesn't matter. And down and across. I'm going to bring up my uh, destination here. So it's actually right underneath. So the way that's angled, I might be able to clip a bit of this front panel. So yeah, I'll go. 
can I come across? So, and I'm going to come across this angle, that's the point there, and then I'm going to join up. It's, uh, it's quite fiddly going across these vision bits here, so we've got here, that's black, that's great. So I'm going to expand out a bit, because I know this is going to be black, this bit here, and I'm going to bypass these. And tuck in at the back here instead and then I'm going to increase my angle across here and then tuck it in that means I can just fill this whole area in black instead of fiddling around with that just to make things a bit easier like so that means the whole area will be black just there and yeah looking pretty good so happy enough with all of that so I'm just going to keep going with these angles the next stage uh, is to, and I would say I'm going to use a bit of a larger brush. Not too big though, because I don't want to go too out of control on this one. But I'm going to take a larger brush and you just fill your panels in. Don't worry about the neatness here, we'll come to that later on, but you just want to fill this in now with your black. And I will go two coats for this here, because you want it looking quite solid. But uh, you're just working up to your line that you've created. And filling it in with the black. As you can see, not too bad, it's taking too long. A bit tricky getting those patterns right. But uh, happy enough of ours has come out. I'm just trimming around here near the tracks. And then you just fill in the lines. Fill in between the lines here for this panel, so it's going to go along. Uh, so I need to stop here because I need to continue that line along, but that's where that one's going to go. Then obviously you're going to skip one, that's going to be grey, and then you're going to be black here with the next one. So I would do all your zigzag lines first, across the entire vehicle, and then when you're happy enough, just start filling in your alternate uh, panels here with your black. Alright, so pattern's complete. I've just done a second coat here, and that second coat is very quick. Just generally covering those panels don't need to be anywhere near as as tidy as the first coat. So that's just drying off as you can see. But there's your panels uh, blocked in. And you can see the direction of it here. It's flying in that direction, around, and then around the other side. There. It does look very plain. It's not much to look at at this stage. It's all about effect that we're going to go for next. But it's uh, good to get these base colours done. And if you follow any of the painted tutorials, usually at the base colour stage, the models doesn't look particularly good at all but um, that's great to get these key colors in position and to get that pattern done so you just follow that same process and it just looks great it does it's a nice color scheme nice pattern to follow because you're going for larger angles it's not as intricate doesn't take quite so long but that's two coats and they're just drying off uh, and then the turret all angled in I finished it off a little bit underneath as well just to link the whole thing together but when that goes on those colours link up like so, and it flows through as it should. So, like that, yeah, that tucks in there, so it looks fine. I uh, also did a little bit of extra uh, on here, just repainting that just to make that nice and solid as well. So, three washes we're going to do. Seraphim Sepia, so this one's first. I'm going to put this on whilst this is wet, because it's just going to be areas where the, the worst of the grime is going to be, which is going to be the tracks. Um, so just give that a shake, use a bit of plastic here just to hold that open. So I can work on this now, I'm going to use a larger brush, so I've got a Games Workshop uh, shade brush here. Here's a good spot to hold the vehicle, just like so, and then one point of contact here. So, here we go, tracks. Larger brush will fill this in nice and quickly. It'd be good to start getting some washes on this or fill in all the details for you. But I want this to have a browner look here. This is where the worst of the grime is going to be. And using the brush to, to push into all the, the details on the sides of the track. Like 
so just tucking in I'm going to do a bit more of this length here so I'm going to flood it too much, there's a fair bit of wash has gone on there so I'm going to stretch it all along the length here a larger brush you can just work it in to fill in all the gaps don't want any gaps showing like so, nice and quick, so that's the track done and I'm then going to stab this wash where any mud and grime would flick up so like this working around just stabbing it along to add a bit of grime around. This is the first of the, the grime going onto the vehicle now. So still at very early stages. But just using the brush just to stab that in. In fact, underneath, I'm just going to fill in this whole area. I want to tone underneath right down. And the easiest way without much effort is just to put washes on. Not worry too much. If the tank does flip over, if you're keeping it, when you're using the game 40k, you're removing vehicles from play. But if you are flipping it over, then you want some kind of shading. You don't want the stark original colour. That wouldn't look too good. So I'm going to fill it in here. And then you imagine driving through puddles and so on. There's going to be some mud flicking up. So I'm going to catch the front of this, not too over the top. Like so, just stabbing in some detail on there. It's starting to look apart now already. This side, nice and quick. Puts people off from painting vehicles is the, the size of the project. But if you can use a large brush and just put this wash on quickly, cover large areas nice and quick. Because a lot of the hard work's been done now with the all the angles being painted. That was more technical. Now this isn't a welcome break here to be doing this. I mean, careful not to rub off the black paint. I'm putting my thumb on a panel that's just in grey, that won't come off. And then I'm just going to flick up the back here. Around. Up here. And around. something like that. So I'm just going to carry on. Uh, one other area to do would be to put a wash uh, on the Shab T-Bone searchlight here to fill that in with the same Sarah from Sepia. Okay, so that's that dry. Last of the black paint is dried and then I actually used a hair dryer <laughs> just to get this dry quicker. Uh, but um, there it is. And immediately you start putting washes on, all of a sudden it starts looking realistic. I mean, already it looks pretty good. But I want to get this rustier uh, here you will notice it slides, it's a good idea to do that and just around the track because you see that grime starting to come through. So that's that done. Next stage then, and it'll be good, we're going to put a wash over the entire vehicle. That's going to be good for all of this black paint work here, it'll help seal it in. So non oil here, and you're going to be going over everything with this, apart from the face, uh, and then also uh, the searchlight here as well. That reminds me, before we do this, <laughs> there is another colour to do here. So some of you probably already know, it's needs to do the warp stone glow. So this will need to be done first here, but it's it's not messed anything up. This green it really is just mainly around the turret uh, and then some of the other sighting equipment as well. So just show you where. So it's going to be his visor. Just in that green. And it's it's only small areas, but it stands out. And it's a great colour. I really do like this one. Uh, you can go for green. You could swap that out for blue. Orange would look cool. Red would look good. So you can pick and choose whatever colour you want. Uh, we decided to go for green. I think it's a nice match-up. But uh, any of those other colours I mentioned would look just as good. Purple, even, would look good as well. So this is the viewing aperture here, if the turret's down, the commander can still see from multiple angles. So there's going to be multiple panels here to paint. Not going to paint the sides of the panel, just the panel itself. 
and I'm going to put the washes over the top, we'll do some, that will shade it and then we can do some effects with that which I'll show you later on, to really make them pop. There's another one just there, I want to go solid green, so I'm just dabbing the paint here, and I think one coat will do it, nice and solid green, all the way around. The other spot to do will be uh, the end of the heavy bolter here, just the end, just there, in that green and on the other side uh, as well. Right, so that's that done. Those panels there, the visor, add, and then those tips on the heavy bolters. So uh, one other thing I've just noticed is, remember the hatch, this hatch is up, and so uh, you can see it actually, the design will go across the hatch a little bit here, so I've flipped it over and just tucks it in there like so. So if the hatch was closed, that's where the camouflage pattern will go over. So ready to go now, so no oil, and I might go for a larger brush here, yeah I'm going to go for this bigger brush again because we're covering the entire vehicle, so that will speed things up a lot, and you're just looking to cover uh, all the track skin, all the areas you've done already, but then onto the regular armour plate as well, so I'll do one side here, and I'll give you an idea, so working this on, now, there's a lot on the brush there, so I'm going to work around. And what I'm aiming for is to fill in every detail and every crevice here with this. I'm going to rotate that around. They'll loosen up later on when you move them a bit. But the priority here is to get that shading in there. Rotate back again. Fill it in. You've got to work on this here. It'll take a while. Just gathering up any spare wash. It's all gathering around the bottom here, so I'm just going to suck it up with the brush here. Catch underneath. Gathering up any excess. Any puddles I don't want forming. And yeah, this is going to start drying, so you want to move along at a good enough pace. Now, notice I'm doing a whole panel. I'm not just doing half a panel and then come back to it later and find the edges have dried and it's not looking good. So I'm gonna just gonna run it like that. Then I'm gonna carry it on top. I do need to work at a, a, a good enough pace. I'm gonna leave the tracks for now because those can be done separately. I'm gonna focus on getting the main panel work filled in here whilst it's wet. Working along in this direction. The details of this I'm going to leave. I just want to get that panelling done evenly. I don't want that drying. Just gathering up any spare. Don't want deep puddles forming here, it won't look very good. But at the same time, you don't want it too thin on the ground for your washes. But look at the difference now. Now we're starting to get the, the right feel of this. Working way around the front. Trying to find the right spot to, to hold on to here. You don't want any thumb marks and so on. Just getting the brush in at different angles to make sure it's all filled in. So, top up, fill in this area. Now you're shading all your metal work, even the black panels, painting all of them because that would add, solidify that colour, stop the paint from rubbing off once it's dry. These washes seem to have a great ability to help keep paint on the model. Just going to top up, now I'm going to run along the track guards on this side, down, I'm showing you how quickly you can move here, like this, gathering up any excess. Moving on, and just angling the brush to get into all those nooks and crannies. If you see any that you've missed, bits stick out, then just, just shade them later on, it's no problem. Just going to rotate this around, back again. Now, the other thing is, you know, naturally, you're going to use your models and so on, 
you might find that some of the black does wear off, but the colour it's going to wear off to will be grey. That's the great thing about the spray, so it'll, it'll still look okay, you'll hardly notice it. If any chipping and so on does occur as time goes on. But I've covered that pretty good, happy enough with how that's going on. So, I'm going here, and I'm going to try and catch this. These uh, things at the back here. It's the barrel. I'll need you in just a moment, but I'm just focusing and trying to get all the angles covered and working that brush in. Making sure everywhere's covered properly. Just put my finger on the wash and just scrub that away. Now onto these exhausts. Get the brush into those holes there. It just shades everything. There's a puddle there to suck that up. Good. So I'm just going to carry on here. I'm just going to fill in the bottom of this. And then I'm going to work on the, the tracks as well. So the tracks will be mudded or darkened with this black, but also have a bit of rust showing through as well. There we go. See if the tank's ever flipped over. It's looking pretty sensible now. Just working all the angles, turning the whole thing down. So I'm just going to carry on, go on to the turret, uh, all the weapons, everything gets shaded, apart from the skin, uh, if you can, doesn't really matter, but if you can, avoid that, and also the uh, the light here, the searchlight also, just leave that. All right, so that's the situation that we have now. I've dried this off so it's ready for the next stage, but that's the kind of results that you can expect to get. So it does tone down the grey a fair bit, uh, it really has linked the whole thing together. The tracks are really nicely toned down now. Just love the effect of that simple silver. Two washes over the top. Uh, we're going to knock that down again with a final wash with the Agrax Surf Shade, which we'll do in just a moment. Just showing the black areas around here and then around the back. Done. So you really have moved on since the base colours went on. Uh, and all the turret as well. I haven't painted the insides. I just can't see any point in doing that. Um, so just catching the edges of that like so. That's ready to clip in like that. So the next wash and the final wash, uh, we don't need to do anything with these. These are finished. I'm not going to put any of the wash onto them because so they can just go to the side and await the final highlighting stage. You notice that this vehicle it really is toned down, looking quite dark and dull. Uh, but once the washes are finished, then just start the process, as in all the other tutorials, start the process of gradually lightening up with some different effects that you can do. Uh, but we'll go for uh, Agrax Surf Shade. So with this, it's the last chance to put a bit of rusty grime onto the model. Uh, it's, I, I would say I wouldn't go over the rest of these panels again, because uh, it's really going to knock it down. You don't want it too strong. So. It's going to be around like the tracks and so on again, uh, but I'm just going to fill in one more time around this light here. Now I'm going to fill in the face and just the surrounding, a little bit around the neck. Turn that all in. That's great. That shaded that face just nicely. And that's about it. I might catch these. Yeah, I reckon I'm going to catch these again these green panels. Just add a little bit more shade into them just to darken them down ready for the highlighting. And I reckon we'll put a bit of grime around this hatch as well. A bit of brown showing through. Like that. Anywhere else that you think. But everything, everywhere else looks dark enough. So that'll do. Then onto the main hull of the vehicle. I reckon I'm just going to switch to larger brush. Again just to get a move on. Save time. So again, wherever you think the the grime's going to go. I'm just going to do the tracks and flicking up around the sides like before. So really darkening up the tracks and then just stabbing around the base here as well with this. That tones that right down. It's noticeable. You see that grime along the base? That looks much better. That looks good. Then the tracks. Uh, these exhausts, you know, metal work's going to be a bit more rusty. I'm going to introduce a bit of brown into that, so I'm going to uh, wash that over. 
We're going to stab a fair bit into that, make sure all those vents are filled in. So, the barrel, I'll do the barrel as well. Stabbing around behind. A little bit goes into the main bodywork, doesn't really matter. I want that dump. A little bit on that grill, a little bit on this top grill. Fill in the holes on that grid. Might flood a little bit more into that. That's it. Uh, this back area is all grimy, sort of worn out area here where all the mucks flicked up as these tracks go around and these other tracks tuck around on the inside same process again in the or the underneath of the vehicle and the side panels of the tracks that'll really tone that down now e nice and easy the whole bottom part here just filled in with this just run the brush along that's not that right down in tone easy I'm just going to fill in this area around here. So I'll keep going, but it's that same effect, then just stippling along around the base of the tracks there just to, to build up that grime along there, and then that'll be the last of the washes done. All right, so you're looking at something like this. You can see that shading around the, the tracks there and up onto the panel work. It's more noticeable now. You've got that double layer of seraphim sepia and the Agrax Earth shade and all around here as well. Really nicely toned in and, and shaded down. That'll make our highlights stick out nicely. You've got a little chipping effects to do. Uh, we've got to sharpen up this angle work here and other areas to pick out, even subtle small areas, even like these uh, green panels here and the visor, that'll be picked out nice and sharp and it'll stand out. So some of it looks quite basic, actually have some real areas of interest uh, to look at here. But we're making good progress. You know, tabletop ready, really, for these now if you, if you wanted to stop at this stage. But the, the next process is I'm going to show you how I really emphasize this and not too hard to do. You can get some great results. We'll let this dry entirely and then we'll move on to the final highlights stage. All right, so it looks something like this now once the washes are all dry. And you can see how nicely mudded up those tracks are. Really good, ready just for flicking on some silver to highlight those. So uh, really happy with how they've come out. So what we're gonna do now uh, is edging on uh, the pattern here. So it looks a bit murky and, and dark at this stage. So we want to crisp that up. We want to tidy up our edges here as well because they're not too sharp. A little bit wavy here and there. A few mistakes. Corners need to be tied up and so on. So the trick with this is to take some Ministratum Grey. I've got some here on the palette. And I've got a nice damp brush. And I've added, I'm adding a bit of water to it. So on a nice flow, not too much where you're disrupting the pigment. And I'm just looking to sharpen up these edges. So you just, this is where you're nice and sharp and straight with these. So on a dead straight line. So I'm holding the vehicle, I've got both of my arms on the desk. Um, I'm grasping this one nice and solid, that's not shaking around. And then I've got a hold of the brush and I'm making contact with the model at the same time. Got a nice sharp tip, this is a double O brush here. Artist Opus brushes, and I'm just going to run it along. Sometimes I'm going over black, sometimes I'm going over grey, but I'm running a dead straight line through to tidy that up. Then I'm going to come in at this angle, and there's a bit of, there's a, bit of a bend on this, I, I want to try and correct that, so I'm going to start in the grey, and then cut in on the black a little bit to make that a straight line. If you can see that, it just edge, edges it sharpens it up, helps the pattern stick out. So now I'm going to come in at this angle, I've got a nice sharp tip of a finish just here. Yeah, that's all right. And then again just down here, like so. If you can see the difference between the two, there it is not marked, it looks a bit murky, and there's that nice sharp edge there. So there's this one to do. Like so. And I'm just going to rotate the vehicle around. Catch the edge of this. And remember to then go on around the tracks here as well. Like so. And then we'll get that one done. 
then uh, the sponson here so I'll maybe do this bit first I'm just sharpening up my edge here continuing on if you want to go lighter grey you can just mix a bit of white with the administratum grey and then yeah, it's all wavy here so I did straight line just to just to tidy up sharpen up and neaten your work nice bit of flow here nice damp brush and watered down paint it means the lines aren't too stark that's a good line across so you see that I don't want particularly thick lines here it's just to define these edges nice sharp tip there I'll come in at this angle and you're just working your way around and I'm making pretty good progress so this isn't taking too long spin it around catch this angle make sure they all add up you can see that it's defined quite nicely and I'm going to run across in this direction like so and I've already done the other side you can see the other side sharpened up here pretty good just there that picks it up nicely that, that lifts it it's subtle but it, it really helps it gives you that nice sharp camouflage edge so I'm going around the rest of the vehicle uh, it says obviously a bit to do on the turret as well and that'll be those edges done all right so uh, that's the kind of results you're looking at here now nice and sharp clean and tidy with these edges making really good progress on this tank now but uh, you can see that really crisps that up just a number of things to do not too much uh, maybe maybe focusing on some of the details here so we've got this light to do the skin uh, and then these green bits here the visor and these vision bits here as well so we'll focus in on the details on the turret it's where the eye is going to be drawn towards so it's nice to have some details added in and it also helps to brighten up this design which you know, is a little bit you know it's gray and, and black so it needs a bit of help to lift it so a few little features uh, does go a long way so first thing I want to do is this hatch I'm going to use an older brush, water it down a fair bit, take some white, water it down a fair bit here and then I'm just going to almost like blotching it on. I don't want solid white, I want a washed out kind of look. I don't want it being too stark. I'm just patching it on. It's about 50-50. Don't want to go too watery or you'll lose your pigment and cover it. That is just about right, a nice blotchiness to that. See that? And we'll actually shade this again in just a moment when it dries. Just blotching around. Yeah. Like so, and that's watered down. I'm just blotching it in. And then here. Like that, yeah, very happy with that. So that's come out looking like that. So that white's looking good. And I'm going to keep the white open. We've got warpstone glow and the moot green. We're going to do these vision bits here. So I want to go for first of all the warpstone glow just to tidy this up. So I want, if I can zoom in, there we go, so you can see. I want a, a dark top left corner. So I'm going to redo the green on the right hand side and underneath and then just round it off like this so you've got a darker top left corner and then the solid green we want about two thirds of it and I'm just going to put a second coat on here just tidying up like so then the top left corner is my dot, just whilst I'm waiting for that green to dry. I'm going to put my dot in there. You can even go for a second dot if you wish. If you do, it needs to be uh, smaller than the first one. I'm just going to do one for now and just see how it looks. 
add and then that green just waiting for that to dry and then we'll edge that with the moot green so yeah i'm just going to stick with the one dot sometimes it's a much larger area instead of one dot you can do two but i'm going to, I'm going to do one i think it's enough so a bit of moot green then just to enhance this you watch as this is enhanced and you see how already it's starting to stick out but i'm just going to edge uh, the right hand side like a back to front back to front l shape and then underneath and look at that the way that glows and it just pops out so much from this darker background i'm just going to strengthen it a bit i'm going to catch that edge especially the bottom right hand corner there we go look at the glow on that brilliant exactly the same approach for his visor and the rest of these but you know you're drawing attention to the turret uh, to the tank commander and using some quick techniques but look at that brilliant that work with blue orange whatever color you want to use but the green i think particularly looks nice i'll just press on and get the rest of these done all right done and you can see that looks brilliant and the um the visor there same approach so moot green on the right hand side and then just tuck in a little dot on each top left hand corner of the visor as well so that same kind of glint and reflection going on and that's those done all the way around also it works on square works on the visors and then the round <coughs> crystals there as well you can see on the ends of the heavy bolters real nice touch that you've got a lot of plain dull colors going on uh, but now you've created a nice area of interest and it's nicely focusing in on the uh, the turret here and uh, the model that's emerging i'm going to take the dwarf flesh here on the palette, mix it about 50-50 with the Ashabti bone. A little bit more actually, Ashabti bone. About 70% Ashabti bone. And I'm just going to catch the edges of the face here. So I want to go for the nose. Lips. A little bit of the cheekbones. Can't quite reach in there, so I'm going to leave it. It's not worth risk making a bad mistake. I'm just catching a little bit of the detail. Like so, it just lifts it. So you can repair a face that way. Just one shade, that'll do. If you really want to go for another shade, you can go pure Shabti Burn and just catch the, the most extreme areas, like the end of the nose, for example. And that'll do it. If it's fingers, um, then just repaint the fingers and hands and then put pure Shabti Burn on things like the knuckles and so on. But it's not too much effort required there just to touch up the flesh there and get that looking good. So uh, whilst I remember the hatch here then, I just want to make that a bit more grubby. So I'm taking the serif from Sepia, taking a little bit on a brush, and I just want to tuck it in to the recesses a little bit. It's a quick and easy way of turning white down. Looks a bit too stark here, a bit too clean. I'm going to go around the, uh, the little rivets again, and a few odd patches here and there, so it looks something like that. That just takes the edge off of that white, like so. All right, so next I think we're gonna have to tackle this searchlight here. So really with this one, it's the same kind of approach that you've done uh, here with these, but without the white dot, basically. So you're gonna go back to a shabti bone, and I'm gonna take a brush that's size one, and I'm gonna repaint the shabti bone. I actually wanna take a brush with a better point on it here. So I'm going to go down to a size double zero. And I'm looking to go uh, darker in the top corners and then lighter on this right hand side, similar to how we've got here. So damp brush, shabti bone, I'm going to put it on the palette for a bit more control on the consistency. I'm going to water that down a little bit and add a little bit of water to it on the palette. And so I want to go for bottom corners you can guys you can enhance this as much or as little as you want but I'm just doing a circular motion to leave a darker top left hand corner then I'm virtually gonna fill this entirely this bottom part and run that around and the same so that already starting to lighten up 
I'm going to run it around the bottom here as well. And then the trick is to paint, not to abandon the top corner here, but just to paint the lower edge. Like that. And then paint the other, the lower edge. I can sense my paint thickening up a little bit here, so I'm going to add a bit more water to the mix. Being careful, just want to catch that edge all the way around. Just tidying up. Trying to catch that edge. It is tricky enough. You just keep working nice flow to the paint and gradually tighten all these edges up here. So it's starting to get that glint to it and then this should enhance. Now I'm gonna go 50-50 with white. Ceramite white beer mixed in. Just still keeping the water flying. What a nice flow to this. And then just repeat again, <clears throat> but less this time. So less uh, area covered in the middle here. So just sort of the bottom right hand quarter really. Something like that. Nearly all of that. This bottom edge. And then carefully try and catch this edge here. That's it. See that? And this top edge here. Bit of a test of skill here. This ain't this isn't easy. <laughs> it's not too we're getting it. I'm catching the edge there. So yeah, it's coming out all right. So it's got a nice a bit of a glow to it now. And then I'm going to go virtually almost pure white. Tiny bit of a shabby bone added in. I'll make this the final edge yet. Bottom edge. Not even going to go around the top. I'm just going to catch the bottom edge here. And one more edge. Just that. There, we've got ourselves a, it's an interesting result you get there, but it's, I think it's quite believable that's a flood like that. There we go. Okay, so another focal point. See the way that your eyes drawn into all these little details? Hasn't taken too long to do. Got, got ourselves a nice little area of interest now on the model, and it's in the right spot, you know, where the turret hatch is, and all of the technology there, and also the, the model emerging from the hatch as well. Right, so next stage then, uh, this will really lift the the model here, and that's the chipping effect. So it's basically just common sense areas where you think you're going to get chipped. So it's going to be things like the edges of the armor plating, uh, his, his helmet there, shoulder pads. Uh, you're going to repaint things like the little eagle here on his chest and on the helmet, and catch that as well. This hatch chipping effect on the white here. So there's plenty to do. The key is not to do too much here. Uh, so I've got the iron breaker, I've got a size zero brush with a nice tip to it, which is quite essential. And we'll maybe catch the edge of this. So I've got the brush at an angle, and I just dot around, catching the edge of that. So you can see that. Same with the hatch, just catching the edge of that. Then a little bit of repainting on this hatch opening here to catch that then I'm going to dot in a few scrapes onto the white again don't want to go too over the top then being very careful not to intrude on my 
uh, glow here. Just take that away. Got to be careful. I don't intrude on this. I'm just going to chip up the edges of this. Now it'll help give the tank a nice metallic feel to it, which is the impression you want to try and give it. Is a a big hulk of steel. So I'm going to catch these edges. It'll take a while. The best way to do it uh, is just to angle your brush to catch your edges. You can move quite quickly then. So I've caught the edge there. Now I want to tuck in the inside, catch a few edges. Shoulder pad, catch the edges of that. And you can do things like, uh, like a scrape. So a couple of dashes across to create a scrape on the shoulder pad. Put one on the helmet. Pick out the detail on the helmet, the metallic work, just pick that out again. That chin strap, pick that out. Uh, the eagle, the skull and wings there on his chest. The eagle picked out. So you can see it's all getting enhanced now. Then you move on to things like the larger armor plate. So you're catching things like the tops of rivets, not all of them. And then logically, I think this corner would take a bit of a bashing, so I'm going to run in there and then a few places along this corner here. You can see that. Not too much, so a little bit there, a little bit on this corner. Create a little cluster of damage just there. And that's where it's going to take a hit, isn't it? And then I'm going to run it a bit along here. Again, just angling the brush. So instead of painting, not painting directly, but angling the brush instead. And then as I said earlier, uh, just catching these little rivets in this box. Top corners of this. Not too much, just enough to add a bit of damage. You can see that chipping up just nicely. And then you can do things like your scrapes. Like so. Little spots. Little chips, like that. Look great as well, but not too much. Just you need to you can get carried away and then it just overwhelms the model and it can actually look quite terrible. So you want to just limit the amount of damage coming through. Uh, but there we're starting to get a result here and then I'm going to come in at this angle here and catch the edges of this. You know, and your grey and black add edge really nicely. It's another great advantage of using these colours. I'm just going to run around with this. Back of the searchlight, I think it would take a bit of a bashing and chipping and so on. Pick out this metal work again, just enhance the metal work now. This grab handle. The edge of this hatch. There'll be a few chips and so on on there. Around the hinges and joints, catch that as well. The brush starting to thicken up now, so I'm going to wash it out again. Still on a pretty good float. And then you can, once you get going, you can speed up pretty good. So corner, edge, edge, edge. And you've got to go quite quick because you can't spend forever, but you want to be nice and tidy. So this is the sort of pace that I work at. A bit more emphasis on the corner, corner, grab handle, and catch a few bits. And then a few dots, like that, a couple of scrapes. Bit of battle damage that I made earlier on with the knife, so I'm just going to go around that. And so on. So I'm just going to carry on. Uh, so I'll show you a few other bits here for you to see. Battle damage is these bullets. I'm just going to catch the edge of that hit by dotting it around. Catch the edge of it. And then what you can add is a few flick outs like this. Where the rounds exploded onto the side of the vehicle and you get that kind of result again don't go over the top with this as it'll look terrible you've just got to be quite subtle it's just a few bits coming out is enough like that and you're just painting your angles again so i've got the brush at an angle that's fine it's a larger chip it doesn't matter catching the vehicle at an angle like this working my way along uh, and then your plate, catching the tops of rivets, emphasising the corners a little bit more. 
and then things like this just catch them with a the brush like that a bit along here and then just work them away along and that result and you'll find as you go along as i said I keep saying you don't go over the top because once this is on it's too much it'd be a real nightmare to try and fill it with black again so less is better and you can always add to it a little bit as you go along but you're gradually going to work your way around and you'll see the entire it'll enhance the entire design it'll pick up all the edges for you add that real battle damaged authentic kind of look and it'll make the tank feel very sort of metallic with all of those chips taking place across the model so press on with that uh, and I'll, I'll come back in just a moment and show you the end result yeah before i do same process actually for the track so i'll just mention them so it's just a case of brush at an angle and you're just catching your edges like that in fact you can even go to a larger brush i'm using a smaller brush here but you're just catching the edge to enhance that and you see that the shading all fits in nicely and you're just catching the sharp edge uh, with uh, the iron breaker just to enhance the tracks something like that so i'll press on get the rest of this done so just continuing to work on this just as i make progress just the heavy bolters i'll show you to start on a fresh one here just looking to enhance any metallics already there just looking to enhance what's there not to repaint the entire thing but uh, just to tidy up this barrel catch the end of it Other less important areas, you can just skip them or do a minimal amount of highlighting. But I want to catch the end of that barrel, make it nice, crisp, and clean uh, up the top here as well. I'll run it along the top. This bit, just re picking out the detail. Uh, and this chamber, I can just run the brush over the top of that. Dump. Underneath, done. Flip it around. Done that bit. So it's not too bad. That's it. So it's just repainted, re-highlighted all of that. And then just your black panelling as normal. So just chipping up the corners. Catching your edges. Not too much. I want to keep it the main part the main emphasis being this black panel here. You don't want to flood it with too much chipping, it loses the emphasis there. And then catch the angle. Might put a little We'll scrape across it, so one, two, like that. Just add that in. That's great. So moving quite quickly, and that's that heavy bolter sorted. I'll keep pressing on. Um, things like the barrel I wanted to show you as well. <clears throat> so, for example, here I'm going to go solid silver. I'm going to go mostly silver. So I'm going to start running the brush across like this, just enhancing it. So it's not it's not pure I'm not, I'm not cutting it out really exceptionally tidy i want to keep a lot of that grubbiness on there so i've just added a little bit of water to this brush here so it's giving me more of a murky silver so i'm tidying it up but it's not solid same on the other side here it needs to be tied up there's a few dots and things to cover up so it does need to be tidied I'm just going to work the brush in, leave all the recesses shaded for me. And I think that's pretty good. So the barrel's generally tidy, but it's not crisp cut here. It's that nice, warm, barrel damaged kind of look. Uh, continue on for the rest, and then your usual chipping effect here on your muzzle and so on. So just continuing on to do the chipping effect around the rest of the vehicle. All right, so uh, chipping effect is complete. If I tilt this, you can see uh, the reflection of it there. Again, not too much, not too over the top here. You, there's a little bit, you can see blotchiness here. When the varnish goes on, it will become more of a uniform color. It's just the blotchiness of the washes uh, here. So it'll look tidier in a moment when we put the varnish on. But you can see the chipping effect, not too much, but it's there. Uh, they're just showing you the metallic sort of texture you're try trying to create and the tracks nicely mudded rusty and showing through is that grime that we put on there uh, at the start and then picking out the details here the exhaust the barrel picking out details from that on the grill here on top as well so I've done the whole model should just be a case of constructing this thing again now so we'll break this off 
put this in. Close that on the turret. Put the plate back over. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty happy with that. Nice long vanquisher cannon. Fix this in, spin it around. This should all still move. This is James's ingenious magnetizing less cannon. Should just push in the front. And then my heavy bolters. So for transfers, uh, I'm going to give this a coat of varnish and I'm going to hand it over to James. He's going to uh, drag it into his regiment and uh, add on the appropriate markings. What I'll do is I'll leave some pictures here at the end of the video to give you an idea of how you can mark your vehicle up, just to have it you know, organised into its different squadrons and so on. Uh, or you can check out James's YouTube channel, the way he organises his tanks. Uh, or you can look at the pictures at the end. As well, check out the different battle reports and you can see the way he's organized design. But basically, using areas like here, here on the side of the turret, uh, you can put different colors on for your squadrons and so on. Uh, you can start putting transfers on as well. I'll leave that to James. Uh, for transfers, then, very, very straight. If I just walk you through, uh, it's just it's contained within this video here. Uh, you cut out your transfers where you want them to go, and then it's a mixture of uh, PVA glue, the wood glue that you use for basing, mixed with water. Paint that first onto the area you want your transfer to go, and that'll help stop that ghosting kind of effect that you can get behind a transfer sometimes. It'll stop that from happening and help the transfer stay on. Uh, then you put your transfer on, dab it with tissue to dry it out once it's in position. Add, and then what I would do with this is add, add a little bit of uh, the seraphim sepia to it. If it's a white transfer, for example, just to muddy it, make it a little bit dirty. And then you can put a little bit of chipping on there as well, just to incorporate it into the model. So very straightforward for your transfer, same process as I use for all of the painting tutorials. Uh, but if you want details on how to mark that up, uh, you, again, it's artistic license, you can do what you want, mark them up however you wish. But tanks do look very cool when you have your different markings and squadron numbers on there and so on. Uh, and a nice colour to introduce somewhere. James has gone for red with his, so you'll see like a red uh, chevron a panel on each side. Uh, and then the white numbering and names and markers and so on looks pretty good, but you equally go for blue or green or white or whatever colours you want to use uh, to mark the vehicle up. And this can be another area of interest. And it's great to see tanks uh, with all of their squadron markings and so on. That's that vehicle complete. I'm going to give it a coat of varnish here just so you can see the difference. So it's the Munitorum varnish. This one, so give it a spray. I'm going to deconstruct the whole thing, give it a spray. And again, when you are spraying, you want to avoid. Uh, this Munitorum varnish is fantastic. I haven't had any problems with it at all. But you want to avoid uh, overspraying too much. So I deconstruct the whole thing. And the way I varnish this, start underneath. Uh, light spray, so light spray across here. It's almost like you're, you're hardly making, you're hardly putting any spray onto the model. And then a light spray across here, all four angles, flip it back over, and then a light spray going all the way around as well. But it's better to go for a lighter coat. Don't want to go over over the top with the spray it becomes too much and you, there is that danger of ghosting and and so on uh, with the varnish so lighter sprays if you can you should see it unites all the colors and washes together makes the model look better all right so there it is that's the finished vehicle finally it's the most in demand painting tutorial in the history of the channel <laughs> so finally managed to get this project done and hopefully that's a good guide for you to help you uh, to paint the vehicles up for your estimate of time uh, regiments. So, uh, same process really. If you check out the painting tutorial for the infantry over on YouTube, uh, then you can apply that to all of the infantry units, and then you can follow this technique here, not just for Lim Russes, but for Chimeras, all the vehicles, same process. Uh, it even can be applied to all the super heavies as well, Bane Blades and so on. Uh, exactly the same process. And it would be a good idea to use the same process because then you, your army is going to look united in its colour schemes. So try and stick to the same process that you can. It means that if you you have this tutorial here, uh, you paint a few tanks, some months later you come back and paint a few more, you can just follow this technique along uh, and it's here as a resource for you on the Plus channel. But finally, uh, Astra Militarum in-depth painting tutorial is complete and a Lean Russ Vanquisher tank 
is ready for war. You can see that the varnish here has enhanced the colours. A little bit of shine to it, but that's good for the metallics on here. A lot of varnishes will kill the metallics off, but the Munitorum varnish gives it a nice sort of satin finish, and so the metallics look nice and healthy on the model just here. But there it is. That's the paint tutorial. Keep a look out for more in-depth painting tutorials on the Plus channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.